Hello crafty friends, in today's video we're going to create these really fun and unique index cards. Making these cards was quite experimental, it was trial and error, I tried a few different things, some worked, some didn't, there were some happy accidents, some unhappy accidents and in the end I came out with these four cards and I'm going to show you now how I did them so you can create them too. We're going to start with just blank cards. They're also known as study cards, flash cards, index cards. Some are lined on both sides. I have ones that are only lined on one. Whatever you can find, you can use, even if they're lined on both sides. This technique will still work. To start, I'm going to use my Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks in the colors Brushed Corduroy and Tea Dye. I'm just putting a few drops onto an acrylic block, and then I'm going to spray that with water. The water will dilute the ink a bit, so it's a bit softer and less intense. We're then going to take each card and then smush it onto the acrylic block to pick up the color. Now, as you can see, some turquoise has popped up on some of the cards. This is my first happy accident. Obviously, there was some kind of turquoise pigment on my acrylic block. I hadn't cleaned it properly, but I'm actually quite liking that. And the turquoise and the vintage colors really look well together, so I'm going to carry it through as part of the theme. If you don't have inks, you can do the same technique with watercolors or watered down acrylic paints. I really love this technique because you never really know what designs you're going to get. Each one is a surprise and I could do this a million times. I could make a million cards like this. It's really enjoyable and fun and also quite relaxing. Once the first layer of colour is done, we're going to dry this really well. I'm just using a heat tool to dry it quicker. You can also just leave it to dry naturally or leave it to dry overnight. Now the next part is quite experimental. Let's see if it's going to work. I'm using the colour Vintage Photo in the Distress Oxide Spray. Same way, putting it onto the acrylic block and then adding water. And then I'm pressing the giant size bubble wrap into the ink and pressing it down hoping to get some kind of dots but that didn't work so great not the idea that i had in my mind i thought it would actually make circles but obviously the ink is a bit too transparent or water it's not thick you need more of a thick acrylic paint to actually get the shape of the bubble wrap but that's okay i'm still liking the color that is coming onto the cards so i'm going to continue this throughout and do all six cards the same I would really love if you subscribed to my channel. I have lots of ephemera making tutorials, art journaling, junk journal flip throughs, and of course this is home of the full deck challenge. Hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to click the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. So not what I had pictured in my mind, but I do like it and I love the little blobs of the darker vintage photo color. And I'm going to leave it like that and then dry it well too. The back of the card where the lines are is where we would normally do our journaling. I don't want this to be just plain white, so I'm adding a little bit of watered down ink to the back just to add a little bit of color. Once everything is dry, I'm going to bring one of my favorite products onto my art table. That's my white gesso. And with my finger, I'm going to add a little bit on each card just to lighten some of the colors a little bit and make it a bit more blended and more misty. I feel doing this makes everything a bit more cohesive and it's not just blobs of color on the card. It makes everything blend together and gives it a more uniform look. If you don't have gesso, you could also use white acrylic paint for this step, or you could leave this step out altogether, depending on the colors that you've used on your background and the look that you're looking for. Here I'm going to put two cards side by side, and you can see the difference that slight bit of gesso makes on the card. Now 
Then again, draw your gesso really well before we go on to the next step. And here I have a fine line applicator bottle. I just bought this online. I've added some white acrylic paint and some water and I'm just mixing it and shaking it and I'm going to squeeze and scribble as I go. I'm not writing anything that's legible. I'm just making little squiggles that look like writing, but it's just designs. Now I know some of you are going to ask what is the ratio of water to acrylic paint that I'm putting in my applicator bottle and I don't actually have an answer because I didn't measure anything. I just put the acrylic paint in and then put in some water, shook it around, gave it a bit of a squeeze on a scrap paper until I could get a good consistency. So I had to add a bit more paint because I'd added too much water and it was too watery. So you just have to just try different amounts of each until you get a good flowing liquid that's coming out that's not too thin and not too thick now mine looks okay now that i've put it on but it actually was a little bit too watery because as it's drying and it's on top of the ink some of the ink is actually being absorbed into it and it lightens even more and blends a bit more into the background so like i was saying this video is quite experimental i hadn't tried all of these before but I like to show you everything that I do because then you can learn from me and you can either try it the same or try it a different way. Now the applicator bottles that I bought are not the best. As you can see there's big blobs that are falling out and that's actually just from where the seal is where you screw the top onto the bottle. For some reason it's leaking through there. I tried applying some tissue around it to try and absorb the paint as it squeezes through. I couldn't get it to stop so there's quite a few blobs here and there. With the white it's not too bad. I just dabbed it with a tissue but I probably need to try some different applicator bottles. Um, these ones I just bought I just found them on a online store and got to just to try. I think you'd need to probably just do a bit of research and just check reviews of some just to get some good bottles. It's not a total disaster, I'm still getting the effect that I want. But not quite as bold as I want. So I'm going to do it again, this time using black acrylic paint. And I'm going to go over different areas of the card, the same way, just some scribbles, using the black. I want it more bold. There are those blobs again. <laughs> Very annoying but I will keep at it. Now I started with six, I was gonna make six cards, but due to unforeseen circumstances, only four are successful at the end. You will see why as the video progresses. And what am I gonna do with these four cards? Well, I would like to give them to you as Happy Mail. So if you would like to receive one of these in the post as Happy Mail, wherever you are in the world, as long as I can post it, I will. Please just put a comment below the video that you would like to receive one as a happy mail. And then on the 24th of June, which is two weeks from today, I'm going to randomly pick four people and then I'm going to send it to you as a happy mail. Now for you to be able to give me the contact details if you are going to be a recipient of one of these, please do check back on this video on the 24th of June. At the top of the description box, I will put the four names of the people that have been selected. There's no way I can contact you. I can write in the comments, but a lot of people don't get notification that, that I've written anything and then people don't contact me. So please, 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 please check back and see if your name is at the top of the description box. If it is, you just need to send me an email to shanuki at hotmail.com with your postal details and I'll pop this in the post for you. And in the meantime, there's a big black splotch in the middle of one of my cards that is looking a little bit not so great, but that's okay, we can work with everything. And what will I do with this card? I am going to use my whale tab die cuts and I'm going to die cut some tabs that I'm going to use on my other cards. And this is how we went from six cards to five. I love how these turned out. Each one is unique and I love the different patterns. Now as I'm folding them and trying to see where they're going to go on each card, I realize that they need a pop of color so they can stand out a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place them on a piece of paper and I'm going to add a bit more turquoise color. I'm using my Ken Oliver 
color burst powders I'm just sprinkling a little bit and then adding the water they're quite concentrated so the color is quite intense just add more water and then press them together so the color can spread and once they are dry I think they look great And then I'm thinking that the cards need a bit more turquoise too. They need more color. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to add some stitching using turquoise thread. And then here are the four cards. The fifth one, I did some different kind of stitching with some bunching and I didn't like the way that looked. So that will be a do over or use it for something else. So then there were four. And then I'm going to add the tabs. I just place them where I think they will look good just so I can get an overall picture. And then I'm just going to use a glue stick to adhere them to the card. You will also see that there are some of the threads that are hanging at the bottom of the card. I've left that on purpose. I like threads and stringy bits hanging off my work if you don't like it and you like it a bit neater you can of course trim this I thought about adding some kind of a focal point like a butterfly or maybe a flower but then I thought it will detract from the scribbles which I think that can be the focal point. What I am going to add though is a little bit of bling. I have these little tubs of gold leaf. They come in three different, four different colors, silver, copper, light gold and yellow gold. I got these from Kmart here in Australia in the craft section. So I'm going to add a little bit of the lighter gold just to give it a little bit of zhuzh. I pulled my little sticky sentiments out thinking I was going to use them but they won't work. Let's just add the gold. And to do that I'm just going to use a glue stick. I'm going to spread a little bit of glue. This glue looks purple but it does dry clear. And then using the tweezers I'm just going to pour some of the gold leaf and press it over. And then I'm going to rub it with my finger which flattens it and gives it sort of a, like a broken look. So it's not just solid pieces, it's more bitsy. I really love how sparkly it is. It's super metallic and it really is shiny. I really think it adds to the cards. I was contemplating the sentiment thinking we might need something, but when I placed it down, it was a big no. I think the card looks just fine the way it is we don't want to overdo it so I'll just show you a close-up so you can see that sparkle of the metallic I'm quite happy as to how these cards turned out I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you were inspired to create your own index cards remember if you'd like to receive one of these as a happy mail just comment that below thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video I really appreciate it don't forget to subscribe I will see you again soon. Bye.